Hello guys, you're welcome once again to my channel and things are getting a little bit interesting for you JavaScript folks. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be kicking off with the React aspect of this application. In the last video, we looked at the endpoints responsible for viewing profile, responsible for logging out and responsible for refreshing our token. And um, basically that was for the Lumen aspect of this application. So what are we going to be doing in this video? In this video, we're going to be creating a new React application. We are also going to be installing certain dependencies that we would need like React material, like redux and we are also going to be configuring redux within our application all right so without much talking uh what i would like to do first of all is i'm going to get my terminal here my batch scripting terminal and uh, i want to create a new react application and so to create a new react application i'm going to be using mpx so mpx shipped in with um the latest version of when well, i think when you install the latest version of node i don't know how recent it is but i know for some time now uh since i updated my node version i think it should be about a year now or so i've been using mpx and it has been great so now let's get into it we're going to say uh, mpx create react app and we are going to give our application a name and we are going to call this youtube multi off and now i click on enter and our application is going to be scaffolding and right now our application is done scaffolding and i actually paused the video and kind of went to get something to eat and before i could say jack robinson it has it had scaffolded all the packages so i kind of dropped my food right next to me probably when i'm done shooting this video i'm gonna get back go back and eat my food all right so uh yep our application is done scaffolding and um, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to cd into that directory which is youtube multi auth right yep youtube multi auth so we are within youtube multi auth and um, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to npm start to kickstart our application and right here it tells me something is already running on port 3000 um i think i have another application running on port 3000 and ah, no i don't want to close the application now so i'm going to say would you like to run the app on another port i just say yes and it's going to pick another port for us so we have what port is that let's see so application yep we have on port 3001 so here's our new react application so the first thing i like to do after this is to install all the extra other dependencies we are going to be using for this application and um, i'm going to go to a package the json file i package the json file in oh sorry here package the json file and our package the json file we're going to update our package the json file with the other dependencies that we are going to be using for this application all right guys so now right in our dependencies in here we're going to add the new dependencies that we're going to be using and the first i'm going to be adding here is going to be material ui so if you watch the first video for this series you're going to notice that we we are using material design uh initially i was thinking of using undesign for this but as at the time i was working on this application i noticed that the uh, uh, official documentation for undesign the official website for undesign was down i don't know if anybody noticed that it was down i recently checked it like two days ago and it was up but as a demo i was working on this video it was down so i decided to use react material probably maybe in the next video we're going to use undesign undesign is really cool and i advise us to give it a try i use undesign and react material like say today and design this project and design is going to be perfect for it because this is our requirement next project okay we're looking at just a web application and a mobile application that's just specifically for android users a hey, react material is going to be perfect for it with react native okay so now that's so much talking let's get into the dependencies so the first dependency here is going to be our material ui and of course we are going to you need the core dependency of material ui and for this we are going to need a uh, version 4.9.4 which is one of the recent versions 4.9.4 and um we are also going to use material ui icons so i'm going to call material ui forward slash icons and for the icons we are also going to use 4.9.1 so i'm going to get that in here 4.9.1 and uh we are then going to use material ui lab uh, something i noticed uh, with material ui is they kind of moved um certain things that was initially previously within material ui kind of shifted it to material ui lab like some of the some certain components so let's just add that in here material ui lab yep and we're going to use alpha 45 okay and then the next dependency we are going to need for this application is going to be redox react uh, redox so i'm going to get redox here and for redox we are going to use version 4.0.5 that's for redox and next is going to be react redox and for react redox we are going to use version 7.2.0 and the lax in the redox family that we are going to be using is going to be redox tongue so we're going to need redox tongue 
And the version of Redux Tongue we are going to be using is going to be 2.3.0. Okay, so that is that for the uh, Redux dependencies that we are going to use within this application. The last dependency we are going to be using is going to be our React Router. That means we're going to be installing two dependencies here. One is going to be React Router and the second is going to be React Router. Though. So for React Router, we're going to need version 5.1.2 and for React uh, Router DOM, we're also going to use 5.1.2. And now when I save this, this is just about all the dependencies we are going to be using for our application. And right now we're going to run npm update. And that should update our application with all the dependencies in our package JSON. And uh, we have a couple of errors here. Let's see. No such file or directory with package JSON. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Ah, I'm just making this mistake. Uh, we'll have to first of all CD into uh, YouTube multi auth. Right, multi auth. And then we can run npm update. And now that should update our dependencies for us. So all our dependencies are done installing and uh, I just cleared, uh, uh, basically just kind of restarted the application again. So uh, if you have any error while uh, running this and you noticed uh, that your application was trying to throw some kind of error, what you just need to do is just end your server and restart it and everything is going to work perfectly. Okay, now that we have our application properly uh, working and we are sure now that all our dependencies have installed, what we're going to do next is we are going to set up our Redux store. And to set up our Redux store, we are going to go within our source, the source of our application. And uh, we're going to create a new folder here. And that folder I'm going to call store. And we're going to have two folders within our stores, within our store. And the first is going to be our reducers. And then the second is going to be our actions. So I'm going to have a new folder here called that actions. And uh, I don't like this when this happens. Let me delete this. And uh, okay, let me just use the terminal instead. So let's just uh, move into CD into YouTube multi auth, and then let's move into source and let's move into store. And within store, let's make a new directory here, and we're going to call this directory actions. Yep, and now that is cool. So our actions and our reducers. So within our reducers, we are going to create a root reducer here. So I'm going to call this root reducer. And um, in root reducer, we are going to, going to import combine reducers. And our combined reducers is going to be imported from Redux. So what I'm going to do now after importing this, I'm going to say root reducer would now be the value of combined reducers would be and I'm going to export this root reducer. Since we have not created any reducer yet, I'm going to export our root reducer. Export default root reducer. All right, so now that we have created our root reducer, uh, what we can do next is we are going to create our store. And I like to have my create store in the root of our source folder. So I'm going to create store.js. And in our create store.js, we're going to import create store. We are also going to import apply middleware. And uh, this is going to come from Redux. Then we'll also need to import Tonk from Redux Tonk, of course. And now we we'll need to export our middlewares. And that will take the value of Tonk. And we we'll also need to export create store with middleware. So we're going to call this create store with middleware. So basically this is going to create our store and have our middleware wrap around our store. So I'm going to call our apply middleware function, which we just declared here. And our apply middleware function is going to take the destructured value of middleware and our create store. And the last thing we're going to import export here is going to be our store. So our store is going to be, let's make this a constant, right? Our store is going to be our create store with middleware, then passes our root reducer. 
So yep, we need to yep. So it automatically imports our root register for us. So basically, all we are just doing is we are calling our tongue, which serves as a wrapper for our middlewares, and then we are also using our apply middleware to uh, apply our middlewares to our create store, and then we are now applying our root register to our create store function with middleware, which is this wrapper in here. So now that we have um, done this, I'm going to now save this. And all we need to do now is to go into our index.js and within our index.js, we're going to import the create store, our store. And our store is going to come from our create store. And we are also going to import our provider, which is going to wrap our application and then pass the store as a parameter. And our provider is going to come from React Redux. So now that we have this, our provider is coming from React Redux. We are then very easily going to go into our render method. In our render method, we are going to wrap our application within our provider. So we're going to close our provider, and our provider will take a single parameter, which is the store, and we're going to pass our store. Okay, so now I save this, and when we head over to the browser and I refresh, refresh our application. You can see that we have no error and if I go to the console, it says store does not have a valid register. Make sure the argument passed to the combined register is an object whose values are reducers. So the reason why it is giving us this error is because we have not really created a reducer. Of course, we have created our root reducer, but all our root reducer is doing is simply gathering all our reducers, combining them. It's Our root reducer itself is not really a reducer. It's just kind of like combining all the reducers that we have created with an application and then passing them into our store. So what we are going to do now is we are going to create a reducer. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm going to do here is within our reducers, I'm going to have two folders here, admin. One folder is going to be for admin. And I'm going to have another folder here. And this second folder is going to be for users or user. So within our user folder, I'm going to create a new file. Oh no, not a new file. Let's create a new folder here. Uh, I'm going to call this folder off. And within off, I'm going to create a new file within off. And I'm going to call that file user auth reducer. Yes. So right in here, we have user auth reducer. And for user auth reducer, we are going to create an initial state. So whenever our reducer is called upon, it would have this initial state or unless we change the state. So we're going to set, um, I'm going to call this user of response. And I'm going to set this to an empty string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reducer now. I'm going to call this user of reducer. And our user of reducer is going to take two parameters. The first is going to be, sorry, first is going to be our state. And I'm going to assign our state to the value of our initial state. And the second is going to be our action. So within our uh, user reducers, let me get rid of this. Within our user of reducer, I'm going to write a switch statement here. And our switch statement is going to carry action the type. So basically, we are going to be checking for what kind of action this is. So if this action, if this type of action was say logging, log the user, register, register the user. And within our switch application, for now, we are just going to have our default return our state, our empty state that way. All right, so now that we have our um, user auth reducer, I'm going to export default user auth reducer. Okay, now we save this and then we head into our root reducer and we're going to import uh, from reducers user auth. And this is user auth reducer. And from our user auth reducer, we're going to import, so let me get rid of this. We're going to import user auth reducer. And uh, having imported user auth reducer, within our reducer, we're going to call user auth. And our user auth is going to be the value of user auth reducer. And now if I save this and I head back to application, and I refresh our application and I inspect this element, and I head back to our console, so you can see that that error that we're getting no longer shows out because we have created a new reducer and we have attached that. Uh, we have basically added a reducer into our root reducer, which has been passed to our store. So application now recognizes that at least there's a reducer and then stops throwing that error for us. So that's just about that for this video. In the next video, we're going to be looking at our helper functions that we're going to be using within this application. Thank you.